words. 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 Words for nerds. <laughs> Welcome to Words for Nerds, which is the new name of Magic the Amateuring. Hey everyone, welcome to Magic the Amateuring, because that's a lie. <laughs> that's I'm one a of your hosts. Bald faced lie. Megan. I'm one of your hosts, Maria, and why that. is it called a bald faced lie? Oh, that's a really good question. I just said that and I realized I'm just saying something. I have no idea where it comes from. Maybe it's because um, there's no hair to obscure to hide the, the face of the lie. Oh, yeah. yeah so like exactly. if you have a mustache, you are a much better liar than if you don't. Exactly. It's like a disguise, right? Like it's a dis- uh, the a lie disguise. A lie is like a disguise for the truth. <laughs> That's what I'm going for Halloween is this year. Hey, what are you? I'm a disguise for the truth. Oh, so a lie. Ooh, yes. that, that's an interesting costume idea <laughs> for everybody last minute. I know today is literally Halloween. If you're listening to this episode on the day that it's released, so happy Halloween. I hope you have a spooktacular day and you're dressed up as your favorite magic card. Megan's dressed as an island. I am dressed as an island. I'm always an <laughs> island on the inside because every... every Man is a rock. Yep. And, and an island. And an island. And it's your, like that song. Your hair. What song? I am a, I am a rock. <laughs> I am an island. I thought you were going to start do, singing do, do, do. like a rock. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry I remembered that just now. Those commercials were insufferable. Solid as a rock. That's not a real commercial. <laughs> hey, everyone. We do talk about the card game Magic the Gathering on this show. And today, Sometimes. in particular, we're going to be talking about uh, the most recent Ixalan story. That's a lie, because we're going to go a couple of chapters back in the Ixalan story. But we're going to talk about the current storyline happening on Ixalan with all of our friends, uh, Vraska and Huatli, and our non-friends, Jace. Wow, another bald-faced lie. We were going to tell the most recent story, and we bald-faced lied you. That's right. Uh, then we're also going to talk a little bit more about Sealed. We talked about it some last week, because yes. we were like, hey, Ixalan is weird and complicated. And then we went to a Sealed PPTQ this weekend, and our conclusion is, hey, Ixalan is weird and complicated. We lived our truth, though, which I think is the main point. Exactly. And we've got our decks here with us today, and we're going to crack them and kind of go over with you what we built and... What mistakes or correct decisions we made in the deck building process. That is right. Then we're going to have a little PT preview for you. We're going to talk about some of the Pro Tour teams that you're going to see uh, yeah. in this new season of the Pro Tour teams series. And we're going to try and both, we're both going to try and, and Marshall Sutcliffe this. Yeah. And have a called shot on who's going to win the PT, which to be fair is much harder in a field of like 500. Yeah. Than it is in a field of That's 24. That's true. But that doesn't mean mean that we're not going to try. I'm going to put on my martial suit and try and do my best martial impression. A martial suit is not going to fit you because it's going to be <laughs> much, much too big. Accurate. Accurate. Are we going to put anything, any socks on the line for this? Oh, wow. Okay, yes. Do you know what? If either of us gets it right, the other person owes them for it being so difficult. I mean, it's pretty hard. Three pairs of okay, socks. Okay, three socks are on the three line. Three pairs of socks. Three Woo. good pairs of socks. All um, right, all right, all right. If you want to see uh, the the socks that Marshall got from the two of us uh, for winning his bet, it's not on the GP Providence um, version of his blog, which you can follow on his channel, which is it's the MTG Breakdown, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's his channel. You can check out his Providence blog. Um, and the next will come uh, his one about... Uh, Boston. Boston and then in Richmond. Yeah. So we're a couple of episodes down the line, but if you follow his channel, you'll get a chance. You can to see take it. a look at the socks that Marshall won for that amazing called shot at the world championship. Yeah. So go subscribe to the MTG breakdown on YouTube. And while you're there, you might as well hit subscribe on MTA cast. I mean, you're there. That's really, that's our new way of telling you to <laughs> subscribe to our channel. Go check out these other people's tell awesome you another shows. channel and then be like, while you're there. While you're there. It's exactly. kind of like you went into your podcast app, whatever it was, to listen to another podcast. And while you're there, maybe you'll just turn on Magic the Amateuring. What the heck? Exactly. It's like, oh, man, Maria, you should really go to the store uh, and buy yourself, you know, some cereal. And while you're uh -huh, there, uh -huh. you could get me ice cream. <laughs> Best cereal on three. One, two, two three. three. Cinnamon, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Crunch. And that's 
why this podcast works. <laughs> Talk about a called shot. Anyway, uh, we want to say thank you before we get our episode started to everybody who's a member of the show on patreon.com slash MTA cast. You can donate as little as a dollar, a stinking dollar an episode, all the way up to 10. Uh, if this show, ask yourself this question right now, right now, look into your own eyes, even if you're, if you're driving, don't do that, but do it in your mind's eye, uh, but really focus on the road yeah. uh, and ask yourself, does this show give me something that I find valuable week to week? And if it's as valuable as a single George Washington, then I encourage you to please go over to Patreon and show your support because it means so much to us and it ensures that this show can continue to happen and we can continue to do more and bigger things. And uh, we have our YouTube channel, as we mentioned, and that money goes to support our YouTube channel as well. You really don't make a lot of money <laughs> off of YouTube ad, ad revenue. You Just make basically it, zero You make dollars. basically nothing. So. <laughs> that's <just> zero <laughs> so that's, if, if people want to know, it's supporting both things. So patreon.com slash MTA cast. Thank you to everyone who's joined our family since last episode and if you haven't yet we encourage you to come on over and join the fam um you were going to say something about discord oh that's right uh on discord so one of the things that you get if you're a patron is you get access to our discord channel yeah it's pretty Um, cool in there you guys and we have a little mailbag section on there for you to send us questions uh which we'll answer every week on the show and we don't have any discord questions this week but we also wanted to say hey if you're a patron but you're like do you know what i don't hop on discord all that much for instance you'll never you won't see me on there because when i'm on discord i'm using maria's account <laughs> so sometimes if you see the post from maria sometimes it's actually <laughs> from me um anyways but if you don't use discord all that much um you can also go over to pa- Patreon and send us a message yeah. with your mailbag question. Uh, and we'll also be checking those messages, you know, to find some find some weekly mailbag questions for us to answer for y'all. Yeah. So thank you. It's just another little perk you get for being a patron. A big thank you as well goes out to cardkingdom.com slash MTA cast. That is the address to put in your web browser. You should just favorite it. Just put it up there in your bookmarks. Boop. So you can just click it and it sends you on over to Card Kingdom. It's where Megan and I always buy our cards and accessories that we need. Like I've got this sweet deck box here that I uh, actually love. And you can go into cardkingdom.com slash MTA cast and pick up all of this and more, you know, just anything you want. They've got it. They've got it all. And at lightning fast delivery speeds. Yeah, that is accurate. Almost weekly, we get a story from someone saying how fast they are. And remember, check out the blog while you're there because they do have an active and really cool blog uh, that's helped put together by Holly Santo, uh, formerly of the Girlfriend Bracket. So check them out, cardkingdom.com slash MTA cast. It's time for story time with Megan. Pull up the covers, get your teddy bear, in my case, uh, this fluffy stuffed squirrel, because we're going to listen to some Ixalan story time. I mean, where are we? Ixalan. (laughs) That's right. Um, And actually, this does fit in. We said we didn't have any mailbag questions this week, but we did actually have one um, asking us about a story update. So... Here it is, coming at ya. Uh, so we're going to go back. We're going to actually have two updates, one this week Ooh. and one next week, because nice. there has been a lot happening on Ixalan, and I don't want to talk your ear off about it. Uh, so, first go ahead. of all, the last time that we checked in, Jace had my own personal call shot, yeah, yeah. planes walks to Ixalan without knowing where he was going uh, in the middle of that fight with Nicol Bolas yeah. back on Amonkhet. And Jay says no memory of who he is and like just none. None. Just completely just none. a washed up pirate boy. That's well he's right. not even a pirate boy at this point. That's right. At that point he was just like a little castaway uh, on this you know on this plane and he tried to planeswalk away even though he didn't even he couldn't name what planeswalking was but you know he tried to you do it. You know like it. when you close your eyes and you go send me somewhere else exactly and it doesn't and, work and it, he like That's it like it you know he like basically if he was trying to if he was trying to like rocket launch through the <laughs> ceiling and onto another plane he just like hit the ceiling and smack back down i can imagine that's what planes walking feels like. which is what excellence binding is you know it's like yeah it's, keeps them all He's there bound um and then so next we meet huatli yeah uh warrior poet although actually she's not warrior poet yet oh she's just huatli um, so because warrior poet isn't just her like job description <laughs> wow what a g- monster.com <laughs> click, 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 click. warrior, warrior poet. poet enter um it's, it's actually nothing. like a very revered title um and she's part of the sun empire 
Right. And so it's like there's only ever one in a generation, one warrior poet. And everyone thinks it's going to be her because she's like a great warrior and a great poet. But the emperor has not bestowed this title on her yet. Okay. Um, And so, you know, you see her like they like have a little fight with some vampires. Vampires are the conquerors in this case. Um, And then you learn like the Sun Empire is trying to like take back some land that the vampires took from them. Okay. But also they kind of like the Sun Empire kind of took some land from the merfolk back in the day. So there's like a lot of people fighting for space in Ixalan. Um, And then she's so there's like a pirate ship off the shore and she goes over to it like she and her cousin go over to fight it um and then on that pirate ship there's another planeswalker named angrath of oh, angrath's marauders oh yes um and angrath is a minotaur and there's no other minotaurs on uh really on in, the, in the art are are they in minotaur um no they're not minotaurs angrath's marauders right are the marauders angrath is their captain oh and not a minotaur Angrath is a Minotaur. That's His Marauders aren't. are not are not Minotaurs. Exactly. Just like Got Braska's it. Marauders Woo. are not Gorgons. Okay. They're, I was yeah. thinking of the art of Angrath's Marauders, and I just imagined that the front person was Angrath. No, they're not. Okay. No, Got no, no. it. Um, so Angrath is this giant Minotaur, and Angrath is Sweet. kind of baller, you guys. I'm so excited. He's like, as far as I can tell from like the, the way that they describe him in this story, is like he basically, his insides are are like a forge. They talk about <laughs> he like so he I like feel after I eat Mexican smoke all the time and like when Huatli tries to fight him he's like physically like too he exudes too much heat <laughs> and he has these like giant metal like red hot chains that he uses to fight. Wow. That he can like direct and like coil Whip and people like with? he like kills her dinosaur steed with them uh, and it's in the middle of this giant fight with Angrath um, she's losing and her, she and her cousin she's like oh god this is how we die and that's when her spark ignites um, and she oh. tries to play and walk away again without knowing what it is and she hits briefly sees Kaladesh oh. um, and, but she right she hits the ceiling and has to like and yeah. doesn't get to play and walk away and Angrath's like oh my god you're a planeswalker too uh, like you can help me get away from here. Like let's work together. But she's freaked out. She doesn't know what's going on. So she and her cousin just like run. Wow. Um, and she thinks that what she saw when she saw Kaladesh was actually her seeing Arazka, which is the lost city on Ixalan. Uh, and it's like this golden city, right? Yeah. Um, and it turns out as we're talking about this is that everybody is looking for it. Um, although not the Sun Empire. The Sun Empire, their current emperor is focused on taking back territory from the vampires, right? Um, and Huatli's like, do you know what? I had a vision of the city. And he's like, do you know what? You should go find it. Like, you need to go search it. And with the power, like, all of the different people believe that there's a different kind of power in the hidden city. Yeah. Uh, and, like... Murfrock, to- like, great pool. <laughs> it's a great pool, yeah. And in this case, it's like... One of the aspects of the sun, they, it's kind of like like this big like golden glowing light like the sun. Sure. And all this power. And he's like, you need to go find it. And if you find it, then come back and then you will have the title of warrior poet. Wow. So that was chapter two. That's a lot. I know, right? Whoa. Uh, and like mostly I walked away being like, okay, so you know about Arazka a little bit and they're looking for it. You kind of get the dynamics and Angrath and Huatli are both super cool. Uh, all right. So then our next chapter. Chapter three. Is all about Vraska. Vraski. And you know what? It turns out Vraska is like a really great character and I kind of love her a lot. Yeah. Um, I didn't know this, but like Rav- on Ravnica, she was treated horribly. Why? Because she was a Gorgon. Oh, and they're um, like. Because mm. Ravnica is all like law and justice and run by the Azorius, yeah. right? And so at one point she was like imprisoned and beaten and all of this like terrible stuff. And then she was only allowed to be an assassin. Uh, on Ravnica, because it's like, oh, yeah. you're a Gorgon, you're Golgari. Even the like, Rakdos be, wouldn't take her. <laughs> they're like, you can be an like you're an assassin, and that's what she does. And then she gets a mysterious note uh, from Nicol Bolas, mm. and she goes to the plane that he has constructed for himself, uh, and she has to like, there's this whole she has to do this whole spell. Uh, to like even get access to the plane. And he comes and he's like, do you know what? I can give you the power to control the Golgari, to like become the guild master of the Golgari uh, and to like better 
better things for Gorgons and the Golgari on Ravnica. And Ratfraska's like, that's what I want. Yeah. Right? She wants to make life better for Gorgons. She's tired of only being allowed to be an assassin and how terribly she's been treated. So Ravnica is like her kind of would you say i think it's like her home plane yeah okay i don't know if it's like where she came from but it's like where she's living all the time sure uh and so she's like he's like i'll give you that power if you do this errand for me essentially (laughs) and she's like okay and he gives her the thematic compass which is like once you're on ixalan it will help you find the city of orozka and once you're at the city uh and there's like this you know the power of the city you'll call my you'll call my buddy This other guy who runs errands for me, let him know that you found it and he'll come get it. Wow. Being Nicol Bolas' errand person seems to be a recipe for disaster. Exactly. That's what you would think. But Vraska's like, okay, I don't love the means, but I love the end. So like, I'll, I will do this. And he's like, okay, great. By the way, you won't be able to leave Ixalan until you've done it. So I don't know. I feel like there's the potential he's, setup Nicole's that like, he's what's keeping planeswalkers uh, there. Okay, is yeah. that it was just set up for Vraska, like, hey, you can't leave this plane until, um, you know, you finish this mission for me, and then incidentally, all of these other planeswalkers, or he just has the power to crack it, and he knows like, you know, the plane has its own power that's keeping them from leaving. Yeah. Um, and he's like, you won't be able to leave, but I'll come and crack it once you've done this or whatever. Sure. Right. Um, so Vraska goes, and it turns out she's super happy being a pirate ship captain. She's, she's into just it. like, this is the fucking life for me, man. Maybe she doesn't even want to go. I mean, like, maybe she'll she doesn't want to go back but, because she yeah. feels, you know, she wants to fix things for Gorgons. Um, but she's having a great time. She's like a great captain. Yeah. Um, everyone on Ixlon has their like own kind of magic. So there's like people who have magic that helps them like run boats. Uh, the people of the Sun Empire like have magic that helps them um, like herd the dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, Vraska's like, okay, cool, you know, uh, here's my, here's my pirates, and then she finds Jace, and at first she's like, Jace is the worst, and I'm gonna freaking kill him. <laughs> After um, it. But then she realizes that he's, he's like, doesn't know who he is or anything and she's just like he's basically he's basically like a, a dog yeah <laughs> or like a like a kid who's just like what is this what is this what is this i don't know my name beware if you I don't see know what a I jace can do. at a puppy store and you're like oh look at this little jace he just wants to come home with me and be cute J- he's gonna just grow up out. to be a very angsty teenager with exactly. a lot of love for his hair. Although she, she's like, who was like he used to always be like so awkward and uncomfortable, and but and now he's just like, hey everybody, I'm Jace, I'm Jace, and he like ah. accidentally reads people's minds and doesn't realize that he's doing it. He just thinks that people are talking out loud. <laughs> When Classic he does it Jace. Uh, at first. And so anyways, she finds him and she's like, oh, I can't kill him because it would just He's be just me. too dumb. <laughs> exactly. She's like, I only believe in like being an assassin for you know, people who deserve it. And he, in his current state, does not deserve to be murdered. So, you know, um, they, they set out and they like, you know, they get along. It's cool. Whatever. Um, now they're on a boat together. Okay. Uh, and then we meet, so that was chapter three. Chapter three. Exactly. Um, and then we meet, um, the merfolk who are all these, it turns out there's like, I want to say it's seven or nine rivers. Um, and the river heralds are like Tishana's one, Kumena's one, Kapala's one. And there's like others we haven't met yet. Okay. But those are the three in this one. Um, and it's like, they're each leaders of a particular like band of merfolk essentially. Um, and they're all kind of like, kind of like the rivers. And so Kumena is this one who's like, Tishana is super, super, super old. Um, and knows like stuff about the secrets of like where Araska is. And it turns out that the merfolk are trusted to guard Araska. Yeah. Even though they don't know where it is. They have to like keep that. There's this whole stuff where they're like, even we can't know. We have to keep the secret from ourselves. <sighs> Um, Shush. and Kumena is like, and Kopala and Tishana are on the same page with that. And they're like, okay, like it's, it would be just as bad for us to use it as for the invaders to get it. So we can't have that happening. But Kumena comes and he's like, look, there's this pirate captain who says that she has this compass that's going to lead her there. And then like one of the people of the sun empire had a vision of it. Like we need to use this power to keep them away. And Tishana's like, that's not cool. Cause Kumena, it turns out is kind of like. His, his river is, like, real rocky and rough and tumble and stuff. And he's like that as a person. Um, and Tishana's like, uh-uh. But then Kumena punches her um, out of the blue. Surprise. Um, while she's, like, 
sinking some vampire ships that are out in the ocean with a big storm. Oh. Which is pretty baller. Uh, so they have really they have really sick earth shaping powers. Like it talks like they can shape all water and earth and stuff like that. And it's very cool. Like um, terraforming. Exactly. So what they're setting up, right, is that like the Merfolk uh, with Kumena mainly, um, the pirates with Vraska and I think also Angrath is looking for, but I'm not sure. Angrath might just, he's just like an angry minotaur who wants to get off Ixalan. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the Sun Empire, led by Huatli, they're all looking for it. The vampires are also looking for it, it turns out, because they think that the power in Oraska will make that so that they don't have to be vampires anymore. Like, they'll still get eternal life. But they but won't they have won't to be, suck blood. There would be no drawback. Come on, vampires. Exactly. That's, that what they want. That's what they think is they're like, you know, if we bathe in the eternal sun of Roska or whatever. <laughs> they're going to turn to vampy is. dust. That's what's going to happen. Uh, so anyways, all of those different factions are headed for the city of Roska. Okay. That's what's what, Mason. So basically. It, what's Azkanta? Um, we haven't talked about, they haven't talked about what Azkanta is. Okay. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Maybe that's just some ruins and whatever. Exactly. Or maybe it's like a different hidden city or maybe it's like a different name for it. Okay. But so far, Orozka is the one that everybody's headed for. You know, I saw a picture of a play mat that you can win. Uh That is the map of Ixalan. What? It's kind of cool. That sounds really cool. So I I want to say it was like game day, but it doesn't say game day champion on it. Um, I saw it today, but anyway, there is, there's an event coming up that like you can win the map of Ixalan Playman and it looks pretty cool. And then cool. you can find a Roska. You, you find it so that you, you will know where a Roska is and maybe you can stop drinking blood for once in your life. Oh, my life would be so great if I didn't have to suck blood to stay alive. I Just know, think about that. Think about that. You know, when we think about vampires, we're like, oh, spooky, spooky, vampire time. But the truth is, mosquitoes are vampires. Some bats are vampires. That's weird. Vampires live amongst us. Oh, yeah, you found it. Yeah, here here we go. A champion play mat. Oh, it's a store champion. Ooh, it's very cool. Yeah, isn't that neat? It doesn't look like any other mat I've seen kind of given away for yeah. an event like that. Megan's, Megan's searching for it now. Megan's going to find Araska. Oh, there. There. It's right there. It's right it's there. Right there. <laughs> it's on the map. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, it's been like, it's right. It's lost and like people are hiding where it is and everybody's. Yeah. I mean, even if you know where something is on a map, it doesn't necessarily mean you can find it. I feel like maybe life. Azkanta is like only a lost city for the merfolk. Because, right, it looks like yeah, down here it's like out in the middle like. of the ocean. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, every, you know, everybody's everybody's uh, sailing around looking for it. Cool. Well, keep your ears here on uh, Magic the Amateuring as we continue to walk you through this Ixalan story update. You don't want to miss an episode. Um, me and my stuffed squirrel are going to be back here next week, tucked in our little bed, tucked in our little tree hole, listening to uh, listen to Megan's dulcet tones tell us the haps of Ixalan. <laughs> While we're talking about that sick playmat, uh, there's also some other stuff that that was shown in that same article. First of all is the top eight deck boxes for those store championships. Pretty cool. um, That have art from Rivals of Ixalan. And we don't know anything about this card, but this is like this like weird old school Sphinx guy. Yeah. Not old school. This is like new school Sphinx. New school Sphinx. Uh, Anyways, so who knows what that is from, but maybe it's a Sphinx that guards Araska also. Rivals of Ixalan. On, calling it some sweet mythic sphinx but we can not we don't just have to speculate speculate we don't just have to speculate <laughs> we don't just have to speculate on cars no, from rivals of Ixalan. speculating <laughs> we actually have some cold hard science facts about cards that are in rivals because we've had our very first two preview cards Woo! that's right uh, the first is a full art promo of Silvergill Adept. Oh, beautiful. Uh, and this is a card that you might know from Modern Merfolk. Yeah. And it's getting a little, it looks like it's going to be getting a little reprint. Reprint action. And Rivals of Ixalan. So that is pretty cool. And this is a one and a blue, two one, um, that either you have to pay three extra mana 
Or you reveal a merfolk from your hand, and when it comes into play, you draw a card. Okay, so that card's sick, and some people yeah. are like, is this card good enough to make a merfolk deck standard viable? Ooh, like, I would be so knows? excited. Yeah, and it's it just great. looks gorgeous, so I'm, I'm pretty look, excited. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Uh, and then we've also got Woo! Maria. All What's right. our next new This is a card? pretty stompy dino. Galta Primal Hunger. Ten Ooh. green, green. Twelve whole mana. What? For a 12-12. That's wow. right. A legendary creature. Elder Dinosaur. No more just Elder, elder dinosaur. Dragons. Yeah. Elder Dinosaur. He's so old. He's an old, he's he's an old buddy. He's got really cool like rainbow spots going on. He's, you see this? He's a beauty. Like, look at, oh, look at their like swirls. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Here's his deal. He costs X less to cast where X is a total power of creatures you control. Wow. And of course, trample. Wow. So getting this... This buddy to cost seven is not even that that hard. No, not even. Like in limited, you just like play this card. Six? Yeah. Like you could get this card to cost six. All you need is two three threes. Like think about it. Turn three, you play like a three two. And turn four, you play a three three. And then turn five, you play this. Yeah. There's been people saying like, oh, what if you played, you know, Kinjali's Caller and Otapek Huntmaster and then one other thing? Then you can yep. play this on turn four. Holy buckets. Yep. And it has haste, by the way. What? No, it doesn't. I mean, if you had Otapek Huntmaster in play. Oh, that's right. It's like not by itself. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not by itself. Not by itself. But it does have trample, <laughs> which is important on something of this size. Yeah. Uh, this is also a card that I'm going to note for Momir. <laughs> Giving you another something else to right. cast that 12 Another thing slot. on 12. Because there's, there's always, usually it's only crappy things at 12. What is even at 12? Oh, gosh. Let's find who, out. Who even knows? Because, like, there's some numbers you want to, I mean, you want to get to 15 if you want to Emrakul, right? Yeah, but no one ever gets to 15 Nobody unless really you've got some real weird stuff going on. Weird stuff I mean, is like, happening. Already weird stuff is happening if you're getting up to 12. Yeah, that but, is accurate. But, okay, let's see. Advanced search. We're using scryfall.com, scryfall. which we very highly recommend. We're patrons of scryfall.com, by the way, and you can be a patron too, patreon.com, uh, and support scryfall. Uh, we encourage supporting other magic cr content creators because, you know, that's just that's just how uh, the community should do for each other. You know, we just, we just all want to give back to the greater good. The greater good. And if you haven't checked out Momir, by the way, just a quick plug. A lot of people ask us, you know, how do you get into magic? And we, of course, recommend the decks that you can play against each other from cardkingdom.com, stuff like that. But Momir is actually a fantastic way, if you're tr new getting into magic online, to play magic online for a pretty nil cost. It costs $10 to get an avatar to play the Momir deck, which is you use mana to spend to cast a creature of any uh, any creature whatsoever that has a casting cost of the amount of mana that you've spent, and then you discard a land as a cost. Here to we've it, but... got okay, we've got Blightsteel Colossus. Oh yeah. Sure, okay, sure, wait. Sure, to sure. be fair, that's should've probably about the that. best thing that you can should've, hit. Should have thought about that. Probably the best thing that you can hit. Galta Primal Hunger now. Yep. Um, Iname as one. Wow. This is an eight eight uh, from Kamigawa Block. When a uh, legendary creature spirit, when Iname as one comes into play, if you played it from your hand, you may search your library for a spirit card, put it into play, then shuffle your library. When Iname as one is put into a graveyard from play, you may re remove it from the game if you do return target. Okay, so it has a bunch of text that doesn't Whatever. matter in Momir. It's just an eight eight. It's an eight eight. Boo. Who cares? Or it that betrays with Annihilator two. Uh, 11, 11. Yeah. Eldrazi. Nice. Yeah, Blightsteel well, okay. is definitely Blight the best. Blightsteel is definitely the best, but, but Galta, Galta, after that, I, I would argue. Would be fun. Yeah, exactly. It would be fun. Yeah, check out Momir if you haven't got a chance and you want a chance to play with some of the craziest creatures in Magic. Yep. It's uh, a lot of fun. It's it's pretty it's a pretty cool deal. But yeah, what do you, th what do you think of these two cards, Megan? Um, I'm like... I'm super excited. They seem very cool. Yeah. Um, I am, for one, I'm going to be very excited to be playing Silvergill Adept in a Merfolk-based deck. Oh, it's going to be great. You're just going to draw that card. Ooh, just draw those cards. Hey, Moldrifter. Merfolk Moldrifter. That's well, what we're going to call it. Well, it only draws one card. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, calm that's down. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited for we're standard heads uh, with the addition of Rivals of Ixalan, by yep. the way, because we're going to have more strength for our tribes, and hopefully we'll get to see some more cool tribal decks uh, in our standard. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, now 
And now I forget. Oh, evoke. Like, I wonder if I will ever see evoke again yeah. as a mechanic. It's like, that's a good it's question. Very, very cool. And I think it leads to interesting decisions that people have to make. Good point. Um, anyways, that was just a thought that wandered into my head. <laughs> Let's do an Ixalan Limited update. That's right, everybody. There is more Ixalan Limited to, to be had yet. Oh, yes. Uh, and we get to, to see the GP, the limited GPs that just happened, uh, as they happen always the weekend before a pro tour. Yeah. Uh, we've had a little bit more lead-in time this time around. We absolutely have. Uh, than we usually do. Uh, but it's always still fun to see kind of like what, what ended up on top. Yeah. Uh, so in Hong Kong... We had Ray Sato, uh, and he had a blue, green, black draft deck. See, this is what him. I'm talking about. People are like, oh, Ixalan's already solved. Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. Not true. Like, what is this craziness? Like, yeah. this is what took down a GP. I, you know, I'm getting get up on my high dinosaur right now for a second and say, Ixalan is still fun to draft. I think it's really cool and really fun, and you can still do crazy, innovative things. Like, this deck is playing... <laughs> this deck has a headwater, headwater sentries, sentries, which is the two five for four. Okay, uh, it's got a lot of flyers like a wind strider, an air elemental, and it's a lurking chupacabra. Oh, awesome! A colossal dread moth. Okay. Uh, ooh, a, a tishana. tishana. Yeah, so this is just like a lot of kind of you know good stuff. Ooh, three siren lookouts. Oh, that's and three a, Tishana's there you wayfinder go. with two wild growth walker. Okay, this this deck is we figured is it out. Sweet. This is cool. And a rivers review rivers rebuke and the chupacabra in this deck too. Oh, exactly right. Like I yeah, love it. chupacabra and wild growth walker is going to gain you so much life with all this explore. This deck's cool. This deck is really really cool. Exactly right. Like this. Yeah, this loving deck is it. Sweet. I wanna I wanna go and draft this, but it has some very good rares. That's awesome. Yeah, um, Rivers and Puke. Oh, gosh, that card. That, that, that card, card is completely absurd. Ugh. So congratulations to him, and congratulations goes out as well to Mark Purvis, who won in Liverpool. It was a triple GP weekend. That's right. And he was playing a little red-white aggro action. Okay, how many? I'm not going to take a look. I'm going to guess that he had two uh, hammer skulls, territory hammer wow, skulls. Wow, that's a good. I'm putting right, it out there. That's a good. Oh, you are correct. Woo! <laughs> I was just like, what is the ult- the highest number of that card that you can realistically expect to have in any draft and deck? Any is draft two? deck is two because right? you're just never going to. And get like, more if your red white deck won, like won a draft pod, it's like, yeah. yep, you had two of them. You had two. That's the good. That's the good and correct number. Territorial hammer skull. What a card. What a card. Like, what a good card. So good. Jeez. So this Jeez. is like real low to the ground. We've got three Raptor Companions in Ooh, this deck. Nice. Three, and we're going to protect those three ones with cards like Sheltering Light, a one of Slash of Talent, a one Vampire Zeal, and uh, an Unfriendly Fire, Ooh, I suppose. And you're going to buff them up a little bit with a Pirate's Cutlass. Or send them to the air. One copy of Cobbled Wings in this deck. Nice. It's also got two Queen's Commission. I love it. And a repeating barrage. Nice. For a nice rare in there. Very cool. Classic Very cool. red, right, white aggro. Uh, and then in Phoenix, uh, we had a guy who apparently is like a, a real hardcore Tetris competitor. Nice. Sean Miller. Great job, Sean. Uh, so yeah, let's see. We'll take a look real quick. So we had what. some good na- We had some big names in the top eight of Phoenix, by the way. Reed Duke got second. Yep. Christian Calcano was up in that and top eight as well. And he was drafting his Calcano special. Of course he was. Uh, I can only assume that he didn't win the whole thing because there's no swashbucklings in here. Yeah, there's three Mark of the Vampires, though. That's true. And a one with the wind. Uh, then there's <laughs> Paul, Paul Dean. Dean. Yep. Can- Canadian Paul Dean. Canadian Paul Dean. Uh, all right, sweet. So Sean Miller, he's got two Emissary of Sunrise. Oh, I love this so card. Good. I had this played against me several times this weekend, and it's just so good. It's so good. That first strike, nice. Imperial Aerosaur. Beautiful. Ooh, Paladin of the Bloodstained. Yeah. Do you know what? I really like this card. Maybe more than I should. Yeah, this card continues to go up and up in my estimation. It just is so annoying, right? You have two bodies, first of all. Second of all, one of them has lifelink. Third of all, one of them has three power. I mean... It's it's really... It's so solid. That's all you need. Exactly. mana. I mean... Ugh. Real, real solid. Uh, and then he's got, oh, he's got two, two copies rallying of Rallying Roar. Roar to go with two Queen's Commission, uh, a Fire Cannon Blast and Unfriendly Fire. So, like, that's, like, a really interesting kind of, like, just 
right? It's like a red white deck. It's not red white yeah. dinos. No, it's just like red white aggro. Yeah. Like, let's get it done. And not even, like, super, super streamlined aggro. No. It's just, like, it's here's got, like, some solid Wiley creatures gob. all along the, you know, all along the curve. So this will be something to keep your eye out on um, when you tune into the Pro Tour this weekend is kind of taking a look at what people are drafting now mm-hmm. that the format is more mature. You know, we're not necessarily trying to figure out what's good we kind of know what's good but we're kind of like looking around those corners for new kind of niche strategies that people might not be expecting or different ways to use the cards that we have like using lurking lurking chupacabra or just putting in all of the 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 lookouts in your deck that you could possibly want (laughs) all the cards oh man if I was in blue, I would play every Siren Lookout in it's, my pool up to four. It's absurd five. how much. I would honestly probably play five, play five Siren them. Lookouts. I would play. Tw- I would play twenty three Siren Lookouts. What's your deck, Siren Lookout? And seventeen islands. You win, right? Do you know what? I think at that point you can play like twenty four or twenty five of them. Yeah, 15 you're right. Lands, fifteen lands. Fifteen lands. Twenty five Siren Lookouts. <laughs> Sometimes we'll have this question. What a deck. We'll, we'll talk about this where we're like, hey, how if you had all of these, if you only had one creature type in your deck, who wins? Remember that? That's right. I think our first one, I'm trying to remember, it was like Wingsteed Rider yep. was one of the that cards. That was one of and them. Then there was a second, I forget what, what I don't it was versus when we first asked that question. Yeah. And, and who wins. So a Siren Lookouts versus X, whatever it is. Yeah. I can't think of a good one right now, but um, it's a fun game. <laughs> it is a fun game. It is a fun game. So let's pull out our decks uh, from the sealed PPTQ that we played uh, this past weekend. Uh, Meg and I both stopped by uh, a, a game store and, you know, tried our hand at sealed. I love playing sealed. It's really fun. Yeah. And um, uh, spoiler alert, n- neither of us made the top eight, no. but we were, I would say we were both pretty close. We had to play in round two. Yeah, that's true. We played each that other in round two. Sucked. Friggin' brutal. Ugh. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and I felt like I, I did like about as well as I expected my deck to do. Sure. Uh, where I didn't have anything that was super powerful, right? Like my rares were, uh, I had a rootbound crag, uh, an emperor's vanguard. Nice. Uh, those were the two rares that I was playing, along with a Legion's Landing. Yeah. Which, like, this is this was, like, a big question that I had about this deck was, like, if I should have been playing this Legion's Landing. Because when it comes down, it's just this one, like, right, it makes a 1-1 one, one for yeah. 1. And that is it. And But what you really want to do is flip it. And there were definitely some games that I won because I flipped it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there were games where it's, like, Man, I wish I had drawn a different card. Yeah. Because all it was was a 1-1 one, one for 1. And it was better in my deck because I did have stuff like um, I had a Pirate's Cutlass. You were running three colors. I was. Uh, I had I was splashing red for a Charging Monstrosaur. Oh, yeah. And a Lightning Strike. Okay. And sometimes for a... Um, raging Sword Tooth. A Raging Sword Tooth, yeah. So I had like that Rootbound Crag, and then I had, um, I had the 2-3... Uh, ranging raptors. Oh yeah, which Those I guys actually, are great. Yeah, I really like ranging raptors. This is the one with enrage. Uh, you get to search out a basic land. They're almost never and bad put it into play because they're going to ramp you like ninety five percent of the time, even if oh, they die. And I did have a great game where my opponent like targeted it with a fire cannon blast, <laughs> and I had like I my deck specifically had a couple of tricks because of like especially like Emperor's Vanguard is so much better. Um, oh, yeah. You can get through with it uh, a couple of times. And then the same thing goes for, like, um, right, if I want to flip that Legion's Landing, I'm going to need to attack a little bit more than I usually would. Yeah. And some tricks are good to help you win combat. So I had, like, a copy of Crash the Ramparts, a River Herald's Boon, um, a Vampire's Zeal, and a Sheltering Light. Yeah. As these tricks uh, in my deck. And it's like, so they had that, and I had specifically left up a trick with this on the board. So I got to like give it plus two plus two with vampire zeal, like get a land out of my deck. And then they attacked into it anyways. And I, then I like traded for a creature that I would have traded with anyways and got another land out of my deck. Oh, sick. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I had a big question when I was building. I ended up going green, white, splashing a little bit of red for those cards I mentioned. But I also felt like uh, I very well could have been green, black. I would have had a lot more two drops. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, at the end of the day, feel good about how I did it because I had uh, two Pterodon Knights, which had flying a lot of the time and won me a lot of games. And then I had two of those, uh, the Paladins that we were just talking about, the three twos. Um, 
a lot of times I would sword I would sword in one of them. Sword in. I would board in one of them. Uh, oh, I instead thought you say put your sword pirates. tooth. <laughs> Oh, I did. I, oh, my God. I put so many pirates cutlasses on so many 1-1 vampire tokens. Feels great. great, man. Great. Then they trade up and you gain all this life. Um, so, yeah. But at the end of the day, it was very, it was a little removal light. Yeah. Um, and that was just that was just kind of my pool. I built. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people say the Rakdos life chose me. And, you know, it's true. The Rakdos life did cho- choose me. And, in fact, chose me during this. I chose it during this deck build pretty significantly. I made a big decision because I did have some um, good cards, including good removal in my pool. However, my Mm. good cards were kind of spread out over all the colors. The good removal I'm going to mention right now is two copies of Walk the Plank, okay? Wow. One of them foil. Wow. And uh, you just can't go wrong there. I had two copies of Fire Cannon Blast. Also just like so good. That card is so solid. It is uh, incredible. I had two copies of unfriendly fire what the freaking All right. buckets i had two copies of skullduggery okay Jeez um Louise. so th- like this was this was why i kind of went this direction and while i didn't have the greatest um sometimes the greatest card quality that you want in a rakdos deck as far as creatures go um my removal was just so stellar in these colors that i thought to myself well this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try and lower my curve as much as humanly possible even going as far as playing fire shrine keeper which is a one one with menace um which turned out to be actually not so bad um in this deck if you get to eight mana you get to kill two things um but like i i had tillani's knight which is you know probably one of the better two drops in this deck and then it had mm-hmm. some real dunkers but um and then back it up with solid removal uh, i think it went okay i didn't play out the last round because i was already out of top eight contention but i kind of would be interested to see how i would have done with it there but uh the best card in my deck other than all that removal was um burning sun's avatar which is just a super solid dino that does three in two different ways. Oh, um, man. But that the reason so that good. it that it gave me pause is because I opened a lot of other good cards, like Entrancing Melody. I had Entrancing Melody in blue. Nice. Okay. Very nice. Control Magic there, along with the Stormfleet Aerialist, Deadeye Plunderers, Air Elemental, Prosperous Pirates, Stormfleet Spy, Siren Lookout. Like Those are all solid They're all blue cards. really good, right? Yeah. Like, Those what do I do, though? Cards. Because Walk the Plank is two colors. Burning Sun's Avatar is three. I mean, not two colors, two black, three red, and uh, fire cannon blast, three red, uh, two run aground. There's a dive down in this. Like, I was really considering being Grixis for a long time, but I just didn't have any way to fix mana other than a card like Prosperous Pirate, so I wasn't yeah. sure. And in green, I had fine stuff. I have two copies of Grazing Whiptail. Like, yeah. that card's super solid. A Colossal Dreadma, which is uh, good and sealed. Snapping Sailback. Atsakan Archer. Ixali's Keeper. Just fine. Vine Shaper Mystic. Blah, blah, blah. In white... Uh, I was a little lighter, but I did have a super cool card in Awakening Sun's Avatar. Wow. Can't splash for that, buddy, though. I'll tell you that. No, you sure can't. Um, and uh, my only two uh, cards were Sunfell Grove or Unknown Shores. So I don't know. My, I'm super yeah. interested to see what other people would do with this. So I think what I'm going to do is take a photo of all my colors and stuff and like put it out there. To I want to ask some pros. I think yep. I'm going to email a pro or two and be like, just tell me what you would do. Well, what do you think you'd do? Yeah. Nice. You don't I have like to break it. it down, but I just want to generally know. What you would do. Um, I feel Whew. like, for me, I noticed, like, there was a big difference for me in terms of matchups, how my deck did. And I don't know if you sure. noticed this. Yeah. But, um, like, I played, you were playing red-black, and my opponent before you was also playing red-black. Um, and those both felt like very good matchups for me. Yeah. Um, because I had, like, all, of, had this, those, those all of this life gain. Mm-hmm. And then I just went and played, like, some dino decks. And it's, like, I drew... We ended up in a draw on one of those because we had, like, a 45-minute game one. Oh, I saw Where we game. almost decked, like... That was insane. It got to the point where I was just, like... I was, like, two cards shorter in my library than she was. So I had to kill her yeah. by making a vampire literally every turn until I had enough to swing in for six. Wow. Uh, For the last six points of damage. Like, that game was nuts. And then I, like lost very quickly to the next dinos deck that i fa- faced so it really felt like it's like okay you know and maybe sometimes that that's just what happens uh but it certainly felt that way over the weekend where you know like, what i think I you're right very good clear i have clearly good matchups and then clearly very difficult yeah matchups. and that's something that you normally 
think of in standard, obviously, or any kind of constructed. Mm -hmm. But I felt that as well. Like, I played against you with your life gain. I played another life gain vampires deck. Also lost to that deck uh, pretty easily because you just can't come back uh, from that kind of thing when you're trying to get out early. But I did win two mirror matches. Um, I can't remember the other one that I won. But, yeah, I think mine is just probably better in a mirror match just because it's it's pretty it's pretty all right aggro so like yeah it's gonna do okay and thank thank the heavens i never played anybody playing merfolk because my two walk the flanks would have been worthless completely worthless but um i it was kind of an experiment i wanted to see because i said i I said it in our deck building episode i'm like hey you can play an aggressive deck and i wanted to put my money where my mouth was and i think it i think it turned out all right yeah man. you know i really do so for sure yeah, overall, uh, had a good time. Had a good time playing it. And it was a lot of fun. Looking forward to some more sealed action in the future. That's short for future. <laughs> hey, Megan, what are you going to be doing this weekend? I'm going to be lounging on a beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a lie. It's 30 degrees here. <laughs> A 30 degrees cold beach. A 30 degree lake beach. Perfect. Mm, just the weather for beaching it. Just what everyone wants. Now I do want to like put on a big <laughs> coat and pants and like take my hammock out to the lake to the and beach? just like, like sit why on not? the lake. You could do it for a while before you got too cold. But really, I'm going to be watching the Pro Tour. Pro Tour, Pro Tour, yeah. Pro it's Tour Ixalan. happening. It's happening. It's happening in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's happening and it's happening and... <laughs> It's going to be broadcast on twitch.tv slash magic. Which are two different things happening and happening. Absolutely. Uh, if you add the G on there, it becomes a thing that's happening. That's happening. Yeah. And if you take off the G and put an apostrophe, I guess that's what you still call it. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, then it means it's cool. <laughs> so this is both happening and, and a thing that's happening. cool. <laughs> and uh, we're here at the very start of the team series kind of deal that's right this is the second season of the team series of course um last last year's team series ended in that awesome showdown at the world championship between team musashi and team genesis which i kept thinking all weekend i was like musashi genesis sounds like the villain's name from zoolander (laughs) like it's that's it's not it at all megan i've never seen zoolander what? I've never seen Zoolander. I knew that there's like a look in it like called Blue Ice or something. And that's oh, like his supermodel look. Oh my god. I Is that the movie I'm thinking of? Yeah. Or is it about a guy who owns a zoo? Okay, nope. good. Is it about a guy who owns a zoo? <laughs> Like, there's a guy, and he has some land that was inherited. You know, his great uncle dies and leaves it to him. What am I going to do with this land? And then he sees a lone zebra wander onto it. He's like, I've had a vision for a zoo. No. Zoolander. Coming soon. (laughs) I've never seen it. Is it really good? I know, like, it's a movie and it's a cultural touchstone, but I didn't know if it was any good. Why won't you answer me? I just can't <laughs> believe that you haven't seen Zoolander. I haven't. Um, we'll watch. And you know what we'll else I haven't it. seen still? Eye Origins. <gasps> no, and Even someone had said that if said, you had watched it, they would have become a patron. I know. I know. I just remembered that oh. just now. It would. I would have done it if I had remembered. Okay, well, maybe. Does that deal still stand, human, for the next episode? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay. Heartbreaking. Anyways, anyway, we were talking about team series, the team series, um, and so, so we're, we're stern at zero, exactly, and we're excited to, to just you know we're just going to touch on a couple of the teams uh, that we're going to be seeing this year uh, in the in the team series. Yeah. Uh, so first off is obviously Channel Fireball's got a team. Yep. Um, and it's, of course, it's going to have some sweet players. Yeah, they had two they, teams last time. Yes, and they have long time been sponsoring some of the some of the best players in the game. So this year, Team Channel Fireball is uh, Paolo Vitor Damodorosa, Martin Yuza, Luis Scott Vargas, Mike Sigrist, Ben Stark, and Josh Utter Layton. That's a pretty good team right there. I think that that is five members of the Hall of Fame. Wow! And, and one who is not. Wow! And one who is not. That's their just like their single line on their bio. Five members of the Hall of Fame and one who is not. Five members of the Hall of Fame, one who is. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and returning champ, of course, Paulo Vito Damodorosa coming back. Yeah. He was talking a little bit about it. He was doing commentary last weekend at Phoenix. Yeah. And uh, they were like, hey, how do you feel about going back to the PT as a defending champ? And he's like, oh, I feel pretty good because, like, there's a lot of pressure that's off you. And they're like, what do you mean? And he goes, oh, because, like, I can do bad. And it's like, okay, because the last one I won. <laughs> Oh, so good. Oh, that's that's perfect. Yeah. That's great. What a what a nice way to think about it. Yeah. Uh then this one's pretty cool because it's uh three different continents with yeah. the players. Connected company. I get it. It's like collected company. We've got Christian Calcano the calculator, Jeremy Dizani, Javier Dominguez, Rafael Levy, Andrea Mangucci, and Tamahiro Saito. That's, that's a good team. That's a good team. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Team Eureka is back. That's right. Uh, Eureka had, had, has had a bunch of different uh, players from the EU over the over the yeah. years coming back this year. Uh, we've got face to face games, yeah, uh, which has some some sick pros on it. We've got Corey Burkhardt, okay, yep. Eric Froelich, notable uh, waffle lover and sink liver, Rich yep. Hone, Gabe Nassif, Ben Rubin, and David Williams. Nice, pretty pretty. That's cool. a top notch team right also there. Also, less Canadians. Yeah. Fewer Canadians this time around. Fewer Canadians. Face to face games, of course, a Canadian store. Yes. Uh and then we've got Genesis, one of last year's champion yeah. teams. Um so they they have uh, a lot of the players from last time. They've got but they're adding uh they've got Corey Baumeister now. Get in here, Corey, because who, you know, a great player, Brad Nelson's brother, cutest brothers on the Pro Tour. <laughs> they're so adorable. Call it now. Cutest brothers on the PT. Like, they're so adorable. Yeah, they're pretty cute. Um, And then there's Lucas Blohan, uh, Brian Bronduin, Seth Manfield, and Martin Mueller. Yeah. Uh, Brad so Nelson. Yes. I, I Did you say Brad that. Nelson? When we were talking about adorable. The brothers. The adorable brothers. Oh, okay. Brad Got Nelson, it. Brad Nelson, Corey Baumeister. Got it. Um. So, yeah. That is pretty cool. Uh, speaking of returning champions, oh my gosh. we of course have uh, Musashi exactly as they were. They said, you know what? We won it last time, so we why might have, change? Why change a good thing? Why change? This team is insanity. Um, uh, they took God. down. They took it down, as Megan said. And if I was a betting woman, which sometimes and most notably for socks, I would put my money on Musashi all over again. Yeah, agreed. I mean... Like we said, they did it last time. They just led the pack. They just didn't the even have time. to try. They were just like, here we are. Uh, we're they the could have lost the last Pro Tour miserably. And in fact, they did not actually do very well in the last PT yeah. of the season. But it didn't matter. And they still finished like 10 points ahead of the didn't field. Didn't matter. Pretty, 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 pretty cool. Pretty, 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 and pretty. And if you want to keep your eyes cool. on um, some some pirate boys... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Some pirate boys as seen on the show. Yeah. Uh, we've got Team Tower Games. These are uh, several of our hometown friends who were on our episode about how to qualify for the Pro Tour. Yep. Uh, Sam Eilenfeld and Mac Johnson. Yeah. Uh, who, who again, you can watch on our Pirate Boys episode. Pirate Boys episode. Uh, along with a couple of other uh, local players. Um, and then let's see, there's also Revelation, yeah. which is, so Team Genesis, you might have noticed some of those players were a little bit different. This is like, it's split into two and they have Genesis and Revelation. This, this is, is very, very biblical. biblically themed <laughs> team names. <laughs> but anyways, okay. and this has some of those players along with, uh, from Genesis last year, yeah. along with some new players. So they've got Martin Dang, Paul Dean, Thomas Hendricks, Christopher Larson, Yoel Lars- Larson, Yoel Larson. <laughs> got it. And Peter Soterek. Got it. Uh, that seems so like a yeah. good team as well. And then, of course, we've got uh, Team Ultimate Guard, which you said is Team Puzzle Quest. From last, from from last, last season. year with a couple of changes. Yep. Uh, and then there's also Team Ultra Pro. Cool. Which has got some, you know, also got some sick pros on it. So those are the teams. Yeah, I'm excited to be kind of looking at this from the very beginning of the team series because we kind of hopped into it into the middle last year when we started to do more um, yeah. Pro Tour stuff. So this is, it'll be neat to see it. From the beginning to the completion. And I want to know if anyone's going to bring any new spicy standard decks. Look at me. I am not going to stand here. I'm not going to sit here and watch as you all bring your teamer energy decks. If you do, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be mad because... Maria, you are at Nationals. I know. I want... I there want, were other decks there, were, there. But I want, I want new decks again. There were... 
There were new decks I there. want them again. I want new decks again. You're very demanding. <laughs> I want more new decks. I don't think it's... Re- I'm not being realistic. Maria, do you know what you should do if you want new decks? Make one? Yes. <laughs> you Be know, the new deck you wish to see in the world. That is a great point. I did see a 5-0 and list from an MTGO Constructed League, mm-hmm. and it was an, a black aggro deck, mono black, Ooh. which was pretty cool. It had Ruin Raider in it. Spicy. And it had um, Bone Picker. Oh. It had the little 2-1 zombie friend. Mm. Scrap Heap Scrounger was in there. Ah. Heart of Kieran, of course. Mm. So anyway, that was just a little something something. That is pretty sweet. But you know I'm going to be burden Craig Wesco immediately <laughs> not immediately first is draft but <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean anyway as soon as those constructed yeah. rounds start so those those uh, pre-sleeve decks break out of their deck boxes i'm gonna be there um tell me megan yes right now put put on your marshall socks okay call it called shot who's taking this whole thing down okay you also have to answer this. I know. Though. I shouldn't let you go first. Why do I let you go first every time? You can go first this time. Oh, I did go first last mistake. time. Okay. All right. Here oh, I go. I'm okay. going for this pick. Okay. I, I don't know if I'm right, but I think that Reed Duke had a fabulous year. Okay. So he was a pro point leader. Okay. And he just got second. Yeah. In Phoenix. Yeah. I'm picking the Dukester to finally take it all down. Okay. Lock it in. Wow. All right. That's a bold choice. Bold um, choice. I am going to think about this more. <laughs> You've got a field of 400 people, Megan. How it's hard can it possibly be? freaking people. Oh, F. <laughs> How are you supposed to pick one? I don't know, but three socks are on the line. I know. And they could literally be on the line, too, if you did your laundry Ugh. by drying it, by hanging it on a line. God. Megan is having a moment over here. I don't know if you can see this. If you're watching the YouTube, you, you know, you can. I'm having a really hard time. She's collapsed face down on the desk thinking about this while shuffling through her seal pool from this Look, it's weekend. like, it's so hard, okay? It is. It's very difficult. I just pulled that, I just pulled that name out of nowhere. I'm <laughs> Not really, but. No one's heard of Reed <laughs> I'm going to pick this random person. Straight up nobody. I mean, like, it would be fun if it was just, like, somebody's first pro tour. Right. I should just, like, Google, like, let's look at the list of PT players and, like, first scroll PT, and click this one. This person. Okay. So here's, okay, here's here's my reason for my, my real deliberation. Um, okay. I feel like if I was just going to pick, like, pick someone that we know, that we know of as a player, like... Part of my guts is like, oh, what about like Jerry Thompson, who just came in second at Nationals? Yeah. So obviously he knows how to draft the format, and he was playing Teamer Energy, so he's obviously very good at one of the best decks in the format. And he recently won a Pro Tour. Exactly, but that's where the hangup is, because it's like, it is so hard to win a Pro Tour, right? It's not just a lot of skill, it's a lot of luck. you're like, what are the chances he would get two two in a a season? I feel like that's... Or back two in back. back-to-back seasons. But then again, like, LSV just, like, last yeah. the, the last season he was active had, like, three back-to-back top eights. What if he just came back and won? <laughs> so it's just, like, LSV. He's like, I, I'm done with this commentary thing. Put me back in the game. Boom, win a pro tour. Uh, That'd be pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Yeah. God. Ugh. <laughs> All right, I'll pick Jerry. Okay, Jerry I'll T. I'll pick Jerry T. Great, great guess. All right, so those, lock them in. Those are our called shots here for Pro Tour Ixalan. I feel so, I feel like I, I have not played this game correctly. <laughs> Look, none of us played correctly when we played with Marshall because That's Marshall, right. like, Marshall was certain. Marshall was the one who played correctly. That was insane. Anyway. You can't, we can't all be can't all the be Marshall, Marshall Sutcliffe's of calling who's going to win a tournament. <laughs> True. Tune in uh, starting this weekend, twitch.tv slash magic. Um, uh, yeah. And see some see some uh, excellent action. Word. <laughs> and see if we're right. <laughs> well, everybody, that's this episode of Magic the Amateuring, but don't go anywhere just yet. Because, because I'm already regretting <laughs> my 
I'm betting. Immediately, Megan started to regret. Immediately, her immediately, answer. I was like, God, should I have picked like Shoda? Immediately. Or Yuya? God. Uh. Megan, you've said what you've said. I uh, you've, know. you've made your bed. Let's I line know. it and uh, give away some some sweet prizes. How about that? Will that okay. make you feel better? Sure. All right. <laughs> So if you're a patron, you are eligible for this drawing that we do every month. And uh, this this month's winner is going to take a haul. They're going to get all our sweet uh, uncommons and rares from our sealed thing that we did. Our sealed right, panel last, overall. Last week. And we did a Crack-A-Pack um, uh, Flavor Text Theater here and that has an uh, Ascanta. Search That's for Ascanta right. in Search it. Search for Ascanta. What is Ascanta? Someday we'll know. Someday we'll know. Yeah. And we'll throw in some extra stuff here, like I've got a package of Card Kingdom sleeves. So uh, this is going out to our overall patron, patron for any length of time. This is Ina J- Jorgensen from Norway. Ooh. Yeah. Yay. Norway, congratulations. That's pretty sweet. And we'll be giving away a play mat and a pack of cards or something like that. Of course, always include a Magic the Amateur sticker because yeah. that's and how we do. And a wristband. Uh, this is going to Greg from San Francisco, who is our new patron for October. Thank Very you so cool. much, Greg, for joining the family. In October, we're going to send you a play mat. What, which one do you want to send Greg? Do you know what? What about just, just grab one? Just, just grab, grab one? one from that pile. Okay. This one. <gasps> Ooh. What is this beautiful. one? It's beautiful. It's Search for Ascanta. Oh, speaking of Search for Ascanta, how about searching for some Ascanta, Greg? Because this is going to be yours. That's right. And it, it's, so it's it's a two-sided play mat. It yeah. has Ascanta and the search for it. Nice. So the search and the place. Very okay. cool. Okay. So Greg uh, and Ina, we'll be contacting you and sending you your cool stuff in the mail. Thank you so much for your patronage. And if you want a chance to be entered into this drawing, to be able to send us questions and to just feel really good about uh, supporting things that you love, go to patreon.com slash mtacast and become our patron. And of course, big thank you once again to CardKingdom.com, the sponsor of the show. Go to CardKingdom.com slash MTACast for all of your magical, magical needs. And if you're making a bet with people about who's going to win the PT, good luck to you. Because boy, that's a tough choice. <laughs> it's really, really tough. Uh, oh. If you want to tweet at us with the hashtag called shot, um, go for with it. With who you think is going to win. With who you think is going to win. And we'll kind of keep it in our head if anybody comes out with the right answer. Yeah. Because I would be interested to see if anybody can do it. Yeah, right. Impressive. (laughs) Anyway, see you back here next week for more Magically Amateuring, more story time, and brand new cards to enter for a drawing for November already? Wow. Where does time go? How How does time? How? 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 (laughs) How now, time cow?